The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi folks, Basil Chapman here on this 22nd day of November, Monday, this is Thanksgiving week, and we're going to see there was good news uh, for the market, evidently it loves it, the Dow's up 284 points at 35,887 because Powell has been re-nominated, uh, ooh, um, it was starting to look a little weak there at some point, and then suddenly you got the news and it really helped the market. My thinking was, in fact, the Dow was ready for a bounce with the IWM, the Russell 2000, because they've been the weakest for the past couple of weeks. And then maybe now you start to see a little bit of a pullback in the NDX 100 and maybe even the SMHs, the semiconductors. But wait a minute, look at this. The S&P, so with the Dow up 0.88% at 286, the S&P is up 0.88% at 4739 up 41.99 all-time high and that's a big break because it goes right to now let's do oh, well now i've got the chart showing quite nicely let me see if i can do this at our little slow and that says there's a lot of buying going out there in the market today uh especially when you get a news related event like this so this has to be considered a leg F to the upside in the weekly chart. I could give an alternative count, but just for now, F is fine. Going towards the Chapman Wave inside uh, track repellent zone. And that's helping the 120 minute chart. Look at the monthly leg B. Look at that huge. The leg B has been going. <laughs> this is incredible. Leg B has been going on since uh, that's March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Since October of last year, we've had 12 consecutive, more than that, 12, 13, 13 consecutive higher highs. And this is still a leg B in the monthly chart. That is quite incredible. All right, going on, QQQ, one, two, three. All time high at 408.43 as, uh, as we speak, it's just a little low at 408.11. The low was 405.57. So that actually is the second day of a gap, the second session of a gap up. We'll see if it holds all the way through the day. Very good action. The MACD is good. Stochastics at 91%, very good. On balance volume is a tad overbought. And that was, for me, suggesting that there could be a little bit of a, a rotation where the digestive phase went through the Dow. And I was thinking that perhaps we got something happening here in the QQQ. The problem with that thinking is, look at this Apple, which of course impacts the Dow, but also impacts the NDX 100. Huge move up. It's up 2.8% at 165.06 all time high, up 4.50. Really good action. And I spent a little time on this over the weekend saying, is there a chance that I've missed something? But the count is, this is probably a leg B. And I had discussed this a little earlier saying, for the season holiday uh, gifts, surely Apple is going to benefit. Uh, you know, every year we see the same thing. I mean, just such an easy go-to. You just go to Apple, you get something at the Apple store. And I think that's what you're looking at right now. Look at Amazon. Amazon's finding a much bigger challenge. Had an all-time high of 37.62, uh, not an all-time high, uh, recovery high, all time high was 3773.08 about five months ago. But it's still stuck within a range, within a rectangle range. Yes, it can make new highs, but it isn't showing that forcefulness that says, wow, everyone's going to a a Amazon. Why? You've got competition. Look, Walmart made a 152 round number high about two and a half weeks ago. That was around about the 7th or so of November, um, and still up in the higher range. Costco, all-time high as we speak. 
at 539.00. Um, this says leg E in the daily chart, leg G slash B in the weekly, and a leg D in the monthly. What an extreme leg for a leg D in the monthly. Costco also group. So I don't think you can just put it all into a package. What I think you're looking at is the natural consequence of, of competition says that now you've got a lot more companies that people used to like shopping at that are, are online and you can just do the same easy thing by going online. And, you know, I had on Saturday, I realized I've been wanting to get these electric bulbs that I used to only get at this one uh, store, electric uh, store um, lighting in the Boston area. I bought them elsewhere and they just, I don't know why they put them in the lamp. Um, just didn't work. So I always had to go just to that store. Well, they they, they sort of shut down through the uh, pandemic and they did things online. I didn't even go online to find it. And then on Saturday, we decided, hey, you know what? Let's just go out to their new store. Well, the new store hasn't opened yet. So I said, let's go home. I'm going on Amazon. I ordered it on, on Amazon. I'm in Newton, Massachusetts. I ordered it on Amazon. It was at my door on Sunday, the very next day. The bells, I just put them in, perfect. I mean, that is amazing. Um, so the convenience is an unbelievable factor. It absolutely is. No, it wasn't Nina's. It was Wolfers, actually. Um, always had uh, good success with Wolfers. But in this particular, these bulbs, these are standard bulbs that you can get elsewhere. But when I bought, the, I thought the same sort of thing. At hardware stores, they just didn't work. They just didn't quite turn enough to be able to touch, for the for the to, to ignite, you know, to get the 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 bottom of the bulb and the top of the socket to actually connect. But did it this time. So anyway, that's my little story there. All right, let's get back to us the nitty gritties. Look at gold. Oh, I didn't do IWM. I must go in sequence. I'm going to IWM. Nice move up today after being. Um, just a t very, very weak, uh, two and a half, three weeks, 244.46 on the 8th of November. And I uh, went all the way down to the 233, or was it 234 level on Friday to 32.39. And today it's at 235.24, up 2.52, a nice session, still under the key moving averages. We'll see what happens. Now, what's really interesting about this. We have no charts. You have got charts. No, I'll do this again. I'll just, if no charts, let me just do this. Click. Click. I think those are the charts. Oh, only part of the charts. Sorry. Got it now. That was because of all that, um, all, all that buying near the opening. I, I was a little, I think it must have been 30 seconds or 40 seconds delayed. I don't usually get delayed. Um, so that was intense buying. And that usually says to me, uh oh. Be a little careful here. People are either covering, something a little different is happening. So I uh, hope those are the charts. And then, well, okay, everybody says no charts, no charts. Would you consider nibbling into HIMX? HIMX, uh, we once had that. HIMX is um, IMAX Technologies. I, I have a trouble with this stock. Uh, we had it once, we did very well, and then I've just stepped aside from it. Uh, it's trading at 10.25. Let me do a little work during the break. Maybe this is the start of a bounce, but I think it's stuck in a range. I'll be right back. Dow's up to 75. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, we're back on this Monday, November the 22nd, and we're looking at the Dow 273, S&P's up 43. This is a very going to be a very interesting session. So Hymax, we, we, this is called um, Hymax Technologies, uh, Inc., ADS. We started along back at $4.46 back in November of 2020, November the 17th. Wow, can you believe it is almost exactly a year ago at 4:46, it ran up huge, and we took uh, uh, all, uh, took a bunch off at um, all the way up to 11.76. That's a 163% gain, so 38% gain, 10% gain, and then a 163% gain, and then we were out. Just didn't get back in at all. One of the reasons is that it just that monthly chart was looking like it should go to above 17.88 and it just stalled out and it could not get it just stalled out and I thought well something great was happening with this company and then all of the HIMAX display images uh, semiconductor area and since it's in the semiconductor area I couldn't understand I, I I saw it recently going from the 960 low $9.60 low into the tens and I thought okay that's good and then suddenly have this one big pop to just over 12 and it pulls back. And now I think it's stuck. So let me just do this. If you, Hymax is obviously something that's on uh, the question uh, that is on your, your list of stocks that you follow, uh, Jambalaya, and I'm just going to say if you've been following it and it's one that you, you have done a little bit of work and you can see something that I don't, then I'm going to give you the parameters to look for. It's a good session today. It wasn't a very good session Thursday and Friday. It made that H pattern, but so far it's holding okay. It should have been rallying last Wednesday and Thursday and Friday rather than being weak. So I'm going to suggest that at 10.24, it's about 20 cents higher than I would have said I would have liked for an entry point. Uh, let's see if... Friday was a decent green candle, but in fact, it was a weaker candle, and now we're having that strength. So I'm going to suggest rather than what I would have said on Friday was you could start a position here, 
And if it gets, and I would have thought that if it got above last Friday's high of 10.23, that you could start a position, just a very small position, and then you have to wait two days to see whether or not you're going to come back and test the $10 support or whether it's going to continue higher. At this particular point, I'm going to suggest a little, a something a little bit different. I think that the semiconductor index itself is getting only in a short term toppy. I think it's getting a little toppy. In other words, it's overbought. There are a couple of stocks that have really acted very well. And I think that we're going to have a little bit of a digestive phase there. Uh, we're trying to we try and plan for it. We were wrong. I was wrong. And therefore, because I'm wrong, I'm going to say perhaps it's got a little more strength than I'm anticipating. And therefore, at 1028, I'm going to suggest take a, a, not a nibble, a, more than a nibble. Take a, take a smallish position at 1028. And two reasons. One is because I would have a stop on part of that position, like a 2% stop. I think that's reasonable if, you, if you're looking at this intermediate term to say, you know, I think it has a, a chance to get to the 1065, uh, 1090 level, and then maybe even touch it at 11. My thinking right now is the rectangle formation is really strong. So it does give you support, but that support could be more than 2% risk. So I'm just saying, start a position now. It's, a, it's only a position that would be a little more than a, a nibble, but less than your basic starter position. And what I would do is I'd have one part of that position have a 15 cent stop. Why? Well, I'll make it more. A 20 cent stop. Why? Because if it starts to get pulled back from here, it ha it's not showing the follow through strength that it needs. And you need to do that. But if you get it to 10.28 right now, and by the end of the day, it's wormed its way. It doesn't have to shoot, but just wormed its way. The high is 10.35, but if it even worms its way to 10.32, you've got a little bit of a cushion. And you don't have to do anything. Just put your stop in and let it ride. And then we'll talk about whether you can add to it. But at this particular moment, part of the position should have a little bit like a 20 cent stop because if it starts to pull back and goes towards the 10 level or even under 10 by the end of the day, then your risk is increasing. So I personally, if you just said, what would you do, Basil? I would say, I'd hold off. I'd rather buy strength than weakness in this particular stock. It has to prove itself. It did that very nicely from round about the 17th, 18th of November, October. It ran all the way to 12 from the, from the, the mid to high nines. I don't know if it has the same capacity right now. Look, it can last a long time making slightly lower lows and lower highs when it goes sideways. It just constantly does that. But your time sequence says that you're right in the time sequence as we speak to rally. So I would not do anything right now. I'd wait a day or two. I'd rather buy strength than buy weakness. But I'm saying you could just have your have a little nibble, have a pretty tight stop. Hope that helps you. Next question I had was, where did it go? Uh, wow, a lot of people uh, typed in after after that question. RP, RPRX? RPRX? I don't think I've ever notated this. Uh, Royalty Farmer uh, trading at 41.97, up 38 cents. Look, I love stair-step moves because it's telling you this is the character. I love to look at stocks and say, what's the character? Does it, does it make peak Ds and then pull back? Does it fail? You know, what is it? What's the most consistent thing that it does? And in this particular case, what it's done recently, it's had a sharp move up, and then it takes anywhere from four to eight or more sessions to make another move up, stair-step move with higher highs, higher lows. But the question will be, is this the first time you're getting so many red candles, even though it made a higher high, going from the starting position of just, just about 30, under 35 to uh, over 43, and now for four sessions, five sessions, six sessions has had red candles, even though it made a higher high over there. Um, this is something different. It's saying that as an IPO, it once had back in June-ish or so of last of last year, had an IPO in the, in the 40s. It screamed up to the 50, 55, 56 level, plunged down to 35, zipped up to the 52, 
plunged <laughs> down second time to 35, and now it's rallying. This rally is the one that has a little bit more oomph. I like it. So I do like it, but look at that 40.70 level for the 200 period exponential moving average. So it's got about a two point support level, one and a half point. If you're in it right now, it has two days in this particular pattern, it has two days to break above the high that was made um, on the, I'll give it to you right now. Still a little bit slow there. Look, I can't click on that arrow. There you go. Okay. And that says 43 point, very slow. There we go. 43 point um, 68 was a high on the 16th. I would just suggest to you, I don't know if you, would I buy, would I sell? To tell you the truth right now, I'd hold off. But if you're in it and it's doing well, you want to see it in the 4370s by Wednesday or Thursday, uh, Wednesday or Friday. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 260. Five is visa forty two. That's what happened. Tiger Technicians Hour. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at tfnn.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So, a couple of questions. Of, okay, other questions have come in. Uh, let me just, I have to go to my, uh, let me just check that out. Uh, radio question. Here we go. Good, good morning. Could you please look at Melly? Oh, I have not looked at Melly for ages. I wonder if I've still got it notated yet. It used to be all notated, but I think I have not looked at it for a while. Oh, I haven't got it notated. So, Melly, could you please look at Melly for a possible long trade? Thank you, sent from my iPhone. 
So uh, let's see. So Tim, I, you know, I would not be touching Melly right now. Melly is uh, Mercado Libre Inc. I believe it's a Latin American company. I think it's like a Google. Is it like a Google? I can't remember now. So this way to peak A, peak B, peak C. They just missed it. They just missed making a D. Let me just double check here. It was a high of 1406.16. Come on, make it high. Ah, oh, 1405.09. Yeah, it's like like an Amazon. Uh, thank you very much, Peaky. Um, yeah, I, you know, normally the, the stocks that, that tend to act like that parallel um, an Amazon or a Google, anything like that that has essentially an American genesis and then you just see them flourish in other countries, I, I like that, but this is, I, I've never quite understood many, and I've always missed the big moves to the upside, but fortunately I've also moved the, the, missed the big moves to the downside. This M-shaped pattern, the monthly chart says, hold off a little longer. Give me a yell, Tim, if we, if we can see a trading this week, uh, the low of the week of the 11th of November, of June, was 1,340.44. It's trading at 13.59, down 42. Let's see if we can get into this candle, this area, the 13.52 to 13.40s. Let's see if we find this pattern, the dreaded H that goes to a lowercase a, a lowercase M pattern, and then plunges, and then can't within three bars get even close to the left side low. In this case, the left side low of 14.52. Back on the 11th of October, this is really ugly. Keep it in mind that this is the, this is the kind of stock when it makes a kind of when it makes a base and proves that base as support rather than just a base test. Um, there's a chance that it could have a really good counter trend rally. So I'm not dismissing it. I'm just saying it's actually a very ugly chart right now. Just keep it in mind. Let's look at it again. What is today? Monday. Let's look at it again, maybe Wednesday or Friday. No, Friday we're out, right? So let's look at it Wednesday. And then we'll have to just wait until Monday the next week to see what happens. But if on if by Wednesday it's had a test of the 13 low 50s and actually has a really good rebound back into the 1410s, then I'll say maybe we've got something as a trade. I don't see it anywhere as a position that I want to take longer term. I don't like this chart at all. Next question I had was, okay, we've got that, we've got that. Um, I saw it overnight. Oh, thank you very much, GT, for all those things overnight. That was very interesting. Now, am I going to be able to find it? I wanted to actually mention it today. I thought I'd print it, and then I forgot to print it. Uh, yeah, here we go. New York Times front page. I didn't see this. I, I should have checked out my, my my icons, right? Okay, I didn't. Um, power struggle over cobalt rattles the clean energy revolution. Revolution, yeah. This was really interesting. Um, I didn't go into it as, in detail as much as I could, but thank you for that information because that's certainly, I'm just going to put it aside here. I want to be looking at that for the cobalt area. Um, now, I want to do this. I wanted to show you something. You see how gold is pulled back? It was much, much earlier. It was down just overnight. It was down a little bit, and then it was down $10, and then Powell gets announced. And it goes down thirty-seven dollars at eighteen fourteen. You see this two hundred period moving average. You see how it was resistance, and then it became support, resistance again, and that is at uh, eighteen oh seven. Now, what I'm going to suggest to you is that I had an alternate count, but I discussed this, I believe, on Friday. I said, in my work, there's a pattern that I call. I always like to nickname my, the patterns that I've studied over the years that I've used. And this is the double, the double camel hump pattern. Um, and what does that mean? You know, there are camels that they have a single hump, but there are double cam camels that have a double hump, and that's obviously for storing water. They're the ones probably that travel the most. They need the, the extra storage container. Well, what happens is there is a rise, and it goes to a peak D. Sometimes it's an E, and then there's a pullback, and the MACD goes just a little bit negative, not very, and the stochastic goes down sharply, but it only goes down to about the 40 to 50 percent. Now, I don't know if Harley's listening to me right now. Periodically, I get a note from Harley, but back about 12 years ago, maybe, 
Um, uh, Holly was in my one of my all day webinars. And as this as a chart was pulling back, I said, this is very interesting because when the stochastic doesn't go all the way back under the 20%, but especially under the 15%, you can get a bit of a rally. And then he made the statement, which has just stuck with me for, for years, is that when there's a rally from a stochastic that only goes down to the 50, 40% level, it can be quite strong. And I mean, that's kind of the words that I use, but I didn't make it like a formula. I just said it that this was something I observed and all that. And ever since then, it's it struck me. I mean, look at this on the right. Look at these pullbacks that that pull back to the around about the 30, 40 percent area in the gold contract. And then there was a rally, a rally that failed. So I kept that in mind. And back in back in the summer of 2007, when I was getting sell signals in the general market. I said, I remember a particular show that I spent a lot of time, I said, I know I'm going to spend some time here, and a lot of you are going to be anxious, because you want to be looking at all the different charts, but I want to mention this, and I think it's quite important, is that I think that the weekly chart of the S&P has made a peak, but that peak is incomplete, because the, uh, I wonder if I can go to it now, I, I, let me just see if I can do this, since I'm mentioning it here, SPX.X, there we go, let's go all the way, if I can do that, 2000 and Seven. Let's just move this back here. 2017, 2014, 2011, 2000. There we are. We're coming. Oh, I have. Yeah, I've got it notated. There it is. I think this is exactly the one that I'm looking at. Right there. Okay. So we made a peak D in the weekly chart of the S and P. And it pulled back pretty sharply to a pattern that I called the Chapman Wave unconventional flat base restart to PD um, and then to back to this trough. So we had it once and it pulled back, and that's why I called this unconventional. So I had a bunch of things going on. It made the PT, the MACD turned down horribly. The stochastic pulled back, but it didn't go under 20%. And I said, you know, I think we've got a double camel, camel hump pattern and that there should be another rally and that rally can go to slightly higher than the pre previous peak D and then I think we've got to be real careful. So we got that rally that went from 14 from the high that was made the week of the 20th of July at 1555.90 plunging down to the low that was under that previous that was a flat base restart and went underneath and went to 1370 and then it ran up and it made a doji candle right there the week of October the 12th. And that was it, she wrote. And that's where you see the double camel hump. And it did that in the stochastic as well. So let's go back to what we were talking about. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So let's make it as brief as possible. Gold, as far as I can see, from the GDX, and I love to look at the gold miners for me. Everybody has their own way of looking at gold. I look at it as if the gold miners are holding well. That's kind of, for me, the benchmark. And the gold miners, the GDX, look at this. The GDX made this pattern that we're looking at. Not, yeah, the GDX um, had the same pattern. Went to this alternate count peak G slash B. Now it's a G with a doji candle at 3508. Um, I should mention we are long from 30.74. It's at 33.10. It hit the 50 period moving average. It's tried to rally off that. The weekly chart is good but not great. And it says it's in a trading range. And I'm just going to make it as simple as possible for me. Gold um, in that pattern that I was talking about, that, that double hump pattern suggests that the 1800 level needs to hold if there's a break of the 1800 support and i have to put this into the context of of the dollar the dollar is in leg d it's uh, we're along the dollar from april of 2018 at 90.07 watch it go to 103 watch it pull back to 89 20 we've only taken one little bit off at 96 and here we are 96.41 again um i I think the dollar is telling us that the dollar at this particular moment remains the lead in that holds uh, currency, commodity, or hard, well, the, the, the gold, gold area. Um, to me, that's very important. They were going in the same direction for a little while. As I say, only for a few weeks, a few times a year that do they do that. Um, Seriously, otherwise they can do it just modestly, but mostly they're going in counterpoint. And that just says to me, especially in leg D, that the dollar had been holding up really well. Now it's being impacted. So let's just watch the 1805 to 1796 area as the key support. It might take a little bit now just to find a base of support if it does find that, but I'm going to make the GDX, the one that I'm personally following, certainly because we're long, got a 10% uh, gain in this so far. But what I am looking at is at 33.13, down 54 cents, it's not bad action, but look at that 200 period moving average at 33.05, it was resistance. At 35.08, when it ran there and came back, that was support on Friday. Bam, we've gone right through it. But now it says this is a fulcrum. This is a, a sine wave that it's, it's almost like a coming into Thanksgiving. It's almost like, uh, well, it should be July the 4th. The spit, the, 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 just turning with your whatever it is on the barbecue, just turning on that spit, going below, going above, going below, going below, just spinning around. And that's your midpoint right there, 33.80, uh, 33.60. So I don't see anything so bad right now about the gold, the gold the GDX market vectors, gold miners. I just want to spend a little time. You know, I always use ASA as a benchmark. There's a double hump again. Peak E slash B. This is still an E slash B, 
Not so bad, but when it starts to close decisively under the left side high of 21.75, and it's at 21.80 right now, when it starts to close under that, it says a rectangle formation with the 20.95 ASA gold. This is the ASA gold and precious metals limited trading at 21.80 down 22 cents. So I have a couple of benchmarks, and that's the way I'm looking at Looking at silver, this is a little different. When you look at silver, um, silver is in the weekly chart holding okay hasn't kind of broken the way upside that the way gold did but at the same time what i am looking at is it's really stuck in a range it's at 24 60, 54 down 24 cents i just do this now because i had a question about copper your copper is acting a little bit better over the last two three days but it's still stuck in the lower range is at 441 uh natural gas i asked about that natural gas is at the lower range keeps making slightly lower lows i think it's getting ready for a bounce but it hasn't yet 4.80 um uh, the other thing i want to look at here is um yes that's wheat uh wheat is trading it broke that up channel Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It's gone to a leg D, just like one of our stocks, um, which is a really pleasant surprise to us. Agilent Technologies. Doesn't that look the same? Uh, up channel, and it keeps bumping into the Chapman Wave inside, uh, inside track resistance area. Then pop for two days. Now it's gone above that. Let's go to what we were looking at a moment ago, which was wheat. Does wheat at W? Um, it's a higher high. Um, it's at an or it's at a recovery high. It's at 8.44. Very nice action. That makes the 8.32 to 8.17. Very strong support. Soybean, not, not, not as good yet, but it's right on the 200-period moving average. If it breaks above 12.96 and it's at 17.76 and a half right now, that'll be very good action. That'll say that that weekly down channel starting to break above that. Con. Con is just stuck in a range, in the higher range, but of the rectangle formation at 576, it really needs to get to the 588, 592 area soon to say, I'm breaking out and soybean, as uh, soybean, sugar has been just terrible. Made a peak E and now it's back in the lower part of the range. I shouldn't say terrible. It hasn't acted as well as the as the as the grain so far. That's all part of the DBA, which is what we are long, still long DBA, trading at 2009. We're long from 30.77. Um, yeah, this is very nice. This is the DB Agricultural Fund. I wanted to mention this because look how it broke out of that sideways move because it had a rising uh, channel. If you look at the IWM, what happened is it went for a couple of days above. Well, actually, more than that. It went for two weeks. It ran above the rectangle formation, 234.53 high. It ran all the way to 244.46, uh, 10 points higher on the 8th of November. Pulls back sharply, and now it's trying to make support in the 234, 235 area. That's, oh, I just did that. Okay, yep. Um, and question came in about us. Uh, uh, Jam Jam Elias says, Melly is like eBay. Okay, that's that's good to know. Um, oh, so um, Paul says, as long as the Fed keeps flooding the money, flooding the market with freshly printed uh, $100 bills, there will be no top to this fake market. And the most hype stock ever, NVIDIA, I'm including you now, has a P.E. ratio of um, 117. Oh, 117, not too bad. Not sure you understand this, but that's nosebleed territory. Do make it a great, a great week. So, railing away. Um, all I can say is that Nvidia. Oh, another question came in. Uh, Basil, when naming peaks and, and looking for the lowest identifiable low bar, do you ignore the downwick as the lowest point? No, absolutely. Whatever the price is at the lowest point, that is the lowest point. Remember, in the Chapman Wave methodology, your objective is always to um, look at the full candle, but it's the highs and the lows. The print high and the print low is what you always count. Um, can you look at NVIDIA? I haven't looked at it today. NVIDIA. NVIDIA is trading up again. I uh, had a 346.44 high. It's at 344 right now. So let me get rid of that because that's already history. And 333.50 low. Um, yes, this is very good action. What's the question? Um, if you have no, I am long and looks like there is no resistance or is there? Thanks, Eddie. So, Eddie, you're absolutely correct. Because it's in in 
all-time high territory. It doesn't have any overhead number that we can look at. So yes, it's broken out. It's It's been the absolute leader. I'm looking at the, the on-balance volume, both in the daily, the weekly, but now I'm going to include the monthly and say, that's suggesting that it's getting close, at least to a digestive phase, but it's been an absolute need I'll talk about when we get back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis the tiger first mortgage program may be the program for you the best rate on a five-year cd in the country right now according to bankrate.com is paying one percent per year or one thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars invested the tiger first mortgage program pays seven percent per year paid monthly on secured high value buildable properties in st petersburg florida the investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First mortgage? The Tiger First mortgage program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First mortgage program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Um, let me just do this quickly because I, my, my thinking today was, I, I mean, we didn't know about the Fed chairman announcement. My thinking was that the Dow and maybe the IWM could have a bit of a bounce today as we start to see a little bit of a pullback in the, something like the QQQ, uh, the uh, semiconductors. They've made new all-time highs today, and both the Dow and the Russell 2000 have pretty nice rallies so far. Dow's up 242. But what's really important here, just looking at the very near term, at 47.35, the December E-mini, if it starts to trade, it can't just touch it, but if it starts to trade at 47.28, six points lower, it's about 60, say, down points, at any time today, then be ready that there could be a real quick test of 47.23 in the 200-period moving average. I'm talking about the one-minute chart, but that doesn't mean to say just because of the one-minute chart. But that also implies that if there is now further buying, if people spent this first hour, hour and a half saying, well, let's see how the market acts, and the market continually holds very well and each dip is bought, then watch out because on the upside, because then there's a chance that the market will close at the highs and have one of you know in Thanksgiving week, 
the thinking is usually that the markets are positive. It doesn't always happen, but the thinking is a, a kind of a positive thinking. But I, I'm suspecting that we are kind of overbought in a number of areas, especially, look, um, uh, yeah, NVIDIA. NVIDIA is just an incredible company doing everything right in the – they are in the, the mainstay of what's working. So they're at an all-time high, up 15 points at 345 right now. So just keep an eye on something like that. If it starts to pull back, watch what happens. If it starts to trade under 338, I don't think we'll do that today, maybe by tomorrow or so. But under 338, it's starting to pull back. And if you're looking at anything to do with interest rates, look, Visa, it has to do with sales and interest rates down four, five at 195. Look at AF Affair. This is just the absolute leader because it has interest free and interest bearing loans. All of a sudden, 176 high, just two and a half weeks ago, now at 125. So just be careful now. This is a very select market. 